Um, it's such a pleasure to be here today, finally in person after a long time. And um, as he mentioned, the title of my presentation is CSM Epitope, which is a computational tool that uses interpretable machine learning approach and also um, graph-based signatures to predict linear B-cell epitopes. Uh, my name is Bruna Moreira. I am a PhD candidate at the University of Melbourne in Australia. And I will start this presentation with an overview of the topic. I think the majority of you are already aware of what is epitope, but for the ones that aren't yet, I will just give a briefly overview. Then I will move to the methods used to build this tool and also summarize some preliminary results and the conclusions we have reached so far. So to start, I would like just to briefly introduce some key biological aspects of what is epitope, what types of epitope exist, and what's the relationship between epitope and the vaccine design process itself. So I think the best way to understand what is epitopes is to discuss how our immune system works. And in general, vertebrate immune system works in hierarchical layers of defense. And the most sophisticated one called adaptive immune system is responsible for some um, major um, functions. The major player of the system is lymphocytes, which could be from T cells or B cells. And at this, is this illustration here, um, you can see on the left, a B cell recept full of receptors on its surface. And it's, this is responsible to create and reproduce antibodies. So, it does that in a very specific mechanisms of binding connections. So the B cell receptors can connect to any threat, any potential threat that could invade our system, a microtoxin, a bacteria of any kind of virus. And if we zoom in, we see that the antibody released by the B cell will bind not to the entire antigen, molecule. Instead, it will bind to a small fragment of its surface, that is the epitopes. So in other words, epitopes are small stretches uh, within the antigen surface structure that will bind to an antibody and then elicit a powerful immune response. So that's the mechanism by which antibody could neutralize and kill this, these threats. And the majority of antigens are proteins, and proteins are made of amino acids. And depending on how these amino acids are arranged on the protein structure, we will have two types of epitopes. If these amino acids I are uh, sequentially side by side in the primary structure, we will have the linear epitopes, which are the target of this work. On the other hand, if these residues are far apart in the primary sequence, but close together in space due to the protein folding, we will have the conformational epitopes. And the relationship between this topic and vaccine design, which is our major application, is that the fundamental basis of vaccines is to create long-term protection immunity in the population. And that's how we can lead to our goal, that is to predict linear B-cell epitopes uh, with th three main reasons. The first one is to reduce time and also the cost of mapping epitopes since the experimental methods uh, which map and identify epitopes are extremely laborious and expensive. And I could cite some applications of it, but the two major ones are immunotherapies in ep epitope-based immunotherapies for autoimmune disease and cancer disease like um, personalized cancer vaccines that use epitope-based as a um, fundamental topic, and also vaccine design. And we do, we are aiming to help this field using a high accuracy interpretable machine learning approach to give us biological insights and also graph modeling techniques to represent these uh, residues and distinguish between, between which residues are part of the epitope and which aren't. So the methods that we use, I will start with the data then I will move to the others. So um, in this work, we analyze it and we collect a comprehensive list of previously uh, benchmarked data sets. On the left of this slide, you can check 
five previous methods and the data set that they have curated. We use all of them to analyze, train, test, and evaluate our model. And on the right, um, we also curated a new large scale data set and we're, we will release it. And all of these sets are derived from BCPAP database or IEDB database, data, database which both are composed of only experimentally proved epitope um, data, data points. Regarding how we aim to represent all this antigen protein sequence to help our model to learn the distinguishing between them, we also analyze well-known features within this field like amino acid composition in a variety of group, also antigenicity scale in terms of pairs of amino acids and triplets of amino acids. We also evaluated some physical, chemical and structural composition patterns like hydrophobicity, solvent accessibility and many others. But the novelty here is the use of a mathematical modeling called graph-based signatures, which uh, measure distance pattern among the residues for each input and summarize it as a cumulative uh, distribution vector. This illustration here will, I hope, take this um, modeling more clear. It basically divided in three main steps. So first, if you take a look, it will, given a protein, a peptide sequence, it will pairwise all possible um, residues within it, uh, starting with distance one, it, which means that residues that are side by side, um, in a sliding window, so we will check all pairs within the sequence, then we'll step by step increase this distance till a maximum distance between all the residues, all the possible pairs of residues of this sequence. And after all this mapping, this works as a network, so the residues play a role uh, as nodes of a graph, and the relationship between the pairs uh, and th these are interactions, these are the edges of this graph. And after that, we label them. We put a meaning, um, signification for each. So for example, here we have a pair of residues within distance two, which is like isoleucine and asparagine. We could label them using some well-known scales like Parker hydrophilic or surface accessibility which measures the probability of being part of the surface. We can also apply um, label like physical chemical properties, like isoleucine is considered a, an apolar residue, um, while the asparagine is considered a polar neutral. This is just an example, but we will label all possible pairs within this network to, oh, sorry, to then output this map, this graph information as a vector. So we will have, a bunch of columns for each distance of the mapped uh, pairs. And the machine learning model, we assessed a bunch of models, a bunch of um, supervised classifiers like random forest supervised, like random forest um, support vector machines, um, gradient boosting, and many others. But we also analyzed some glass box uh, model with the aim of grasp what this benchmark data sets could tell us about bias or missing values or average values that maybe were being used to predict something. EBM stands for explainable boosting machine is a type of uh, generalized additive, additive model with terms, with interaction terms. It is, um, it is considered a glass box because you can clearly understand how and why the model is making predictions for each feature used here. The, the, the decision point between, oh, this is an epitope and this is not, is very clear in this method. And I will show an example of this in the, pre, in the next slides. So this is the model we use. And to share our um, preliminary results and the conclusions, we'd like to start with this uh, slide which on the left, we have a table comparing our method with previous state-of-the-art ones using a tenfold cross-validation approach. Here we select one of those data sets that I mentioned before from BCPRED method. Um, this is basically a HIV-composed um, data set. 
the previous state of the art is epitope VAC, but we outperformed all of them in many measurements. And on the right, we can see a chart with some three other different data sets in a blind test comparison. So data that um, were never seen by, by our method. And um, we are uh, represented at, as red color, like CSM epitope. We are better in the majority of them, um, except for one that, were, that we are still uh, is slightly worse than the epitope VAC. And about the interpretability part of the model, what I would like to uh, share here is that what, what can we understand from those pictures here? So this is an output interpretability from the model, from one specific feature. We will have this for each feature used. And in this case, antigenicity scale is an important feature that measures how some amino acids are overrepresented in epitope class compared to non-epitope class in terms of pairs or triplets of amino acids. So we can see here that, sorry, uh, we have two information. So the chart um, above the, the blue line is the model decisions. So the score in Y axis measures the probability. So if it's above zero, the model is choosing that input as an epitope with a different probability. If it's below zero, the model is choosing that input as a non-epitope. And as green bars, we have how many data points we have for that specific range information of feature. And on the X axis, we have the feature value itself. So for a given input sequence, we will check the antigenicity scale of it in a cumulative approach. So it ranges from zero to 10. And if we zoom in, we can see a clear decision point around five where the method learned that from that value on, the, the probability of being epitope is very high. And that's a, 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 an example of how we can understand, for example, if we um, take back to the, to the first uh, chart, we can see that mostly values larger than 10, if we check the orange bar below, we have very few data points. So that could lead us, lead us to understand if we have a spike there, because for each feature we will have this representation. So if we have spikes or some uh, not the unusual behavior for the, for the model, we can say, oh, we, the model seems to be predicting correctly, but maybe it's not because we have a lot of missing data here, or we have average data being taken as the full for that uh, data set. So um, that's a very uh, meaningful information for us to analyze. And in summary, I would like just to um, say again that we are performing with a state-of-the-art uh, MCC value of 0.72 compared with 0.62 from the previous method under a 10 fold cross-validation approach. We are also analyzing a new feature for the linear B-cell epitope field, which improve uh, the identification of epitope and non-epitope. Uh, we are also releasing a new data set that is around six times larger than the previous ones since um, the previous curated data set is dated around five years ago. So we can use this larger information about different type of organisms to leverage this type of predictions with it, which is really challenging due to a lot of things. One of, the, one of it is that epitope is totally context dependent and um, we have a huge imbalance scenario as the previous presentation mentioned here for the case. And we are also under, about to understand the constraints and the trends in several benchmarks that we have the chance to um, analyze too. And as a feature direction, we aim to provide this as a friendly user web server interface and also publish it in GitHub too. Um, to conclude, I would like to thank uh, very much both my supervisor, uh, one of them is here, Dr. Douglas, and Dr. David Asher. 
and also uh, the amazing colleagues from my lab that helped me a lot. Also my family and partner that support me a lot that um, I'm Brazilian and I live in Australia since my PhD. So it's a very good time and also um, hard time at the same time. <laughs> so that's all for today. Thank you for all of you who attended and are interested in this topic at the last day of the conference as well. So have you considered uh, graph-based neural networks like GCNs? Because basically you're, you're classifying the graph. Um, the, uh, the point of graph neural networks here is that the input data set is sequence. We don't, uh, for the majority of the data set, we don't have the structure information of it. So in this preliminary test, we just, we don't, we don't uh, consider it, but uh, it's a good way to think that if we could use like AlphaFold or any other method to use to have the structure of all the missing structures, it would be nice. It's a, it's a good way to analyze too. Thank you for your, your question. Um, so when you're, I don't know if you analyze this, but is there any patterns in like the false positives or false negatives that you observe in the epitopes regarding the linear epitope, like did the, did you ever notice it like shifted or something and that caused some problems or do you analyze it on a, like a data point by data point level? Um, that's a good point. Um, no, but uh, we do have false positive and false negative. Uh, although our um, performance is higher than the previous one, it's not excellent, right? It's not the perfect, perfect thing. Uh, but no, I don't uh, have a pattern observation to, to conclude why it's being classified as false positive or false negative yet. But that's a good point too. Um, okay, I don't know if um, people from that are online heard. So we evaluated several features in sets. So we use a feature selection to best, um, to have a set that best could uh, increase the performance of the method. But there are some feature importance rank that we got. Uh, there are major five features that are highly important and the others are contributing as interaction terms because of the type of the machine learning model. But yeah, we have a, we do have a rank for it too. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the same um, suggestions that uh, our colleague gave us now. Yeah, I think it's a good path and it's worth trying to understand if for the sequence that we don't have the um, structure, if we predict the structure and if it will help or not. The one point that I concern about it is that um, linear B cell epitopes in average uh, ranges around 20 amino acids like 10 to 20 amino acids is a very short peptide. And I don't know how confident these models that predicts the structure are about this type of peptides, but yeah, I think it's worth trying to. Yeah. 